Okay. So this is behind the scenes at convention booths. I am Baron Kelrick, Master of the Order of Defense, and I have been running a booth or have been participating in a booth at AwesomeCon, which is a DC event uh, local to me uh, for eight years. Uh, ninth year will be this year. AwesomeCon, if you are unaware or if you're just joining us, uh, is a convention that is nerd skewed um like general nerd skewed uh of about 50,000 people in attendance over 3 days so this is specifically for large conventions although most conventions run in generally the same fashion now one thing that i would like to say up front right away is that a running a booth at a large convention is an event it's an sca event so if it is in your area your canton your shire your barony um it falls under them um so DC is covered by the barony of Storvik. That is my barony. Uh, so we do not represent the entirety of the SCA when we do this, although we do talk about the entirety of the SCA if people ask. Um, we represent our local group, the barony of Storvik in Atlantia. Um, as an event, how many can I, can we do shows of hands? With shows of hands, how many people have run an event before as an autocrat? I don't have very many people in this class. No, it's not a spiked event. But that's a good question. So it looks like it looks like everyone has. Okay, so my class is done. If there's any questions, uh, you let me know. <laughs> no, I, so what is a, a spiked event is an event that goes on the kingdom calendar. Um, we have spike as our, you know, cause we're Atlantia. So we have a seahorse with a unicorn spike. So everything is spiked if it's an official event. Uh, <laughs> nice try. <laughs> Uh, so when you make an official event that goes on the official event calendar, it goes in your kingdom newsletter or your Brunel newsletter, um, all of newsletter things are official. Um, awesome con is an official demo, but not just anybody in the kingdom can show up and work this demo because convention rules are the umbrella that goes over top of it, which means that, you know, they just can't come and go into the event just because we have a booth there um it's basically just the people that are yeah so um so here yes it's not there are many things that make an event an official event this is a 80 percent official event there are no attendees there are only workers Right. If you go to an event and you throw out all the armored fighters, rapier fighters, archers, ANS display people, cooks, uh, I'm sorry, not cooks, but people eating the feast, all of those people. And you throw them away. What you have left is the event staff. And that is what you are at a event, especially an event of this kind. Um we, uh, I'll go over this. I, I went over this last hour, but so Awesome Con is, used to be tiny, uh, only about 7,000 people. Um, I mean, it's, I know that's like a, somebody's medium sized event in some areas, but it's tiny for DC, Washington, DC. So um, it used to be tiny. So they reached out to local nonprofit groups to see if we wanted to, or special interest groups, to see if we wanted to display a booth there. And 
uh, for free. They would give us a 10 by 10 space and we would do a display there and then we wouldn't sell anything. Um, right. <laughs> yes. And, and, and honestly, 7,000 people is not bad. The So we get a promotional booth. What, what I'm what I'm doing is if, if nobody was here for the, I can still share my screen, right? Yeah. Okay. If nobody was here for the first hour, let me briefly say, I'll share this and then I'll share the other one. So this is the, this is our first year promotional booth that we put together. It's pretty sparse. I was actually pretty proud of this at the time, but even afterwards, I thought, man, we could definitely do better than this. I have a ton of stuff that would look great on a display. A 10 by 10 booth gave us, and we'll go over equipment that you get from the venue itself. A 10 by 10 booth gets you one table and two chairs. It's only 10, 10 foot of space. That's usually enough space for their eight foot table, two feet to get in and out. Uh, for a front and then a couple people behind to dis uh, to describe what you are doing. Oh, I see people are, Artemisia can only dream of 7,000. Dream the dream. After this class and watching the recording of the last one, you will know how to build up your thing so big that you will have 7,000 people in no time. Okay, so uh, I'll this screenshot in the dream video. Yes, we'll go over that dream video too. Uh, so show my screen. So this is last year, not last year's, the year before last year's share. And I'm saying share like it's a Pokemon thing. I choose you picture. All right. Uh, this is what we had last year. Uh, as you can see, we had a 20 by 20 foot space. This again, I'm pointing at the screen. This here, I don't know if you can see my mouse, is the back wall of the convention. And here is the computer where we also played the dream video. Uh, and you could see how we definitely filled the space to make use of uh, and better be able to share the passions that we feel within the SCI. This class isn't about sharing your passions. This is about making it right. You would definitely walk up to that booth. And that is the whole point. Okay. So in order to get there, there's a whole bunch of behind the scenes things. That's what we're going to talk about. And I'm not going to go over time this time, Patrice. I, I'm not going to assure you. I'm just going to say it like it's a true statement. So um, we, as a 50,000 person venue, get a free space. We get a free exhibition space. There are some things that go along with that. We're not allowed to sell anything. Uh, we're not allowed to give out food or drink uh, because the venue does supply those um, to people who, other attendees, um, not supply. They offer them for sale. So we're not allowed to give any out ourselves. That includes things like um, um, what do you call them? The like the little castles and things that people make out of shortbread or whatever. Uh, I'm sure somebody will pop up and let me know. I forget what they're called. Anyway, no, no. Alcohol is usually is usually is usually not allowed at these events uh, for various reasons. Uh, don't bring alcohol. Uh, ours doesn't allow it at all. Ours also doesn't allow weapons, things over 14 feet tall. Um, there are a whole bunch of rules that are like little, and you can kind of stay in the lines with those. I keep looking to the side because that's where my face is. And I want to make sure that I don't have like a weird facial expression. In any case, um, but we also get, uh, if we do a demo within that, like we do a dance class um, and we have a special room for that, we don't uh, take away from the people from the booth to run that class. We have special badges, uh, exhibition badges, uh, not promotion badges. They're a little bit different. Um, so exhibition badges, we get six of those for per class that we're going to teach. We import in a bunch of teachers and then we give that class. And as long as those are well attended and ours had over a hundred, a hundred people each time we taught that class. So think of that. We gave a class on dancing that was, I think it was called six medieval dances. And basically it was just like, I don't think we did anything as complex as hole in the wall right? Like it was the Maltese brawl. It was, I think it was a couple brawls. Um, and then a Pavan. Um, 
and then the one where you take two steps forward and make a giant knot one step one two steps forward and one step back and make a giant knot in any case um you yeah english country dance maybe uh i i didn't take the class uh i was out sick last year um and i had a baby so uh i kind of was a pm from afar i came in for setup and i came for breakdown and i let people um i let people kind of be adults and run themselves and we ran we ran into issues with even that um so yeah some simple brawls or i think i think they did toss the duchess maybe um without tossing the duchess um the horse brawl i think they did the horse brawl that one was super popular um and the maltese brawl was again super popular um we did have a musician so i i don't want to um this is kind of a last thing but it doesn't take that many people if they know what they're doing to teach a class and run everybody through everybody really pays attention they all want to be there it's only for an hour uh, so there's not a whole lot of things you can do. You teach a dance, you run it once or twice, and then you move on to the next dance. And a list of those dances would be awesome. Yes. Yes, I can do that. Um, my dance person was in the last hour uh, and left. I said nice things about her, which I'm not going to repeat because she's not here to hear them. Huh. Uh, so if you're in a smaller space or a more well-developed um, convention that doesn't need promotional booths in order to fill out their gigantic space that they have and make it seem not empty, uh, you're probably going to have to pay for that space. Um, if there's some cost benefit analysis that needs to be done on whether or not your group has enough money uh, and willpower in order to be able to do that, some of those spaces can get pretty expensive. Uh, if you're also paying for not only the space, but your badges at the same time, some badges, I know Dragon Con, I believe that they have a booth at Dragon Con that is in Georgia. Um, I'm pretty sure it's as big or a little bit bigger uh, than Awesome Con is, uh, but they have to buy their own booth and they have to buy their own badges that have their name on it. Ours don't have our name on it, so we can trade them off with other people as they come and go. This is super helpful the years that we don't have any demos and we only have um, the booth itself. The booth gives us eight. We don't want to only have eight people there the whole time. I'm going to get into staffing issues here in a second. Um, and um, trading on and off uh, for people coming to the event, you just have somebody go give them you know, their badge they come in with the new badge the other person just leaves and 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 it, it goes along that way um so i know this is going on recording and i i don't know another way to say it um the adults that you think that you have at your booth aren't actually adults they are children and those children bring forth a host of weird problems because they're stuck with each other doing a job, volunteer on a weekend when all of this crazy fun stuff is happening all around them and they are in close proximity to each other. So you have to manage that. Uh, you need a schedule. 100% you need a schedule. We tried to get away from a schedule last year because we had a schedule uh, the year before that and it went so good. And I decided that all of these people that were working it knew what they were doing and they were adults, um, but that didn't work out. Um, they, they couldn't make it work. Just like you would think that people who've been parking cars their whole lives could get to an event without a, a parking lot attendant. And that is never the case. And I don't know why, but it is what it is. So shift work is important. Um, we say every two hours, some people can stretch that depending on how many people we have working in the booth to about four, about four hours for a volunteer thing is what you want per day, per day. They can work two hours in the morning and then two hours late at night. That's fine. If they want to work two hours and then do a demo for an hour, that's fine. When they're not in the booth, 
working their two hours. And by working, I mean talking to other people about their passions and about how cool the SEA is. Um, you make them, when they're not there, you make them leave the booth. When their shift is over, you make them leave the booth. You make them leave the booth. I cannot stress enough that you make them leave the booth. Um, the longer people are there, even if they're talking about their passion, the crispier they get. And on top of that, other volunteers whose shift that is also want a chance to talk to people. They want their chance, the chance that they signed up for, the reason that they volunteered. If somebody else stays in their place, you're crowding the booth and you're making it so somebody else can't have that experience and you may need them next year to run the booth. Uh, and they need that experience in order to be able to do so. We did have that problem last year uh, when I wasn't there. People weren't sure who was in charge, even though it was designated who was in charge. Um, that's that's a chain of command issue. Um, they just didn't respect the person who was left in charge, so they didn't go to them. So that meant everything was in chaos. Um, like I said, if you've run an event before as an autocrat, you have come to these conclusions yourselves softly or to your special person who you grasp to, you know, you know. Uh, setup and teardown. Setup is usually really important. Teardown is usually really not important. Um, mostly for setup, you got to make sure that everybody's there at the same time and that you have a plan for how you want it to go up. Last year, I had to um, field a lot of grousing because we didn't know how everything was going up. And there were a bunch of new people there who wanted to volunteer and wanted to volunteer at setup because they just happened to be off that day. That's great. But if you're given a new spot in a new booth, new area to fill, new dimensions, or a bunch of new stuff that you have to find a place for, that plan is subject to change. There's space going up. We went over this in the last class. There's space going up. We bought wire racks, um, and we'll go over that for expenses, um, that you can use as a wire wall, and you can hang things to that wire wall. Um, but where was I? I don't want to go in this route. Tear down. Tear down is usually super easy. You just snip the zip ties, pop everything in boxes, and then at the next fighter practice, you divvy it all up and it goes back to their prospective owners. Do not forget who owns what. How many costumers are there that own the exact same costuming books? The answer is all of them. They have a small library of like 10 books and they're all the same. If you're going to display a book, and I encourage you to display books. Um, oh, the Society Central left. Shelling left. Drat. Uh, I encourage you to display books. Um, make sure a name is written on the inside. Or, you know, if you don't want to write inside the book, you know, put a sticky note inside the book with somebody's name on it. So you know what's what. Um, some weapons look very similar. Um Rapiers especially can look very similar. Um, make sure people know whose they are. Um, and that's pretty much that. Interpersonal relationship issues, there will be some. Um, you just need to tackle those head on. If you're not a tackler, uh, a head on tackler, um, be a PM and let somebody else be in charge. Um, knowing your limitations on uh, negotiation of the thing, um, reaching out to other people either by phone or by email. If you're not an email person, and I'm really not, um, I'm only an email person when AwesomeCon is in that zone. Uh, otherwise, it's just a place where my spam goes to live. Um, so if you're not comfortable talking on the phone with people, um, and you, you're gonna need to do that. Um, and you're also gonna need to look up here in the eye and say, you're being unreasonable. Why are you being unreasonable? I don't I don't understand. And then you can get to the bottom of it because there are interpersonal issues that people have. This person doesn't like this person. Don't put them on the same shift. Um, but you need to know that in order to not put them on the same shift. I have a, um, a Facebook group 
just for awesome con management everybody who wants to be on there is there we do a per day schedule we let everybody know sorry we let everybody know what's going on during the day everybody's phone numbers is in there on a chat so that people know where who to get in touch with at any given time this is non-negotiable everybody knows it and it's fine with everybody it's like the old phone trees you need to be able to get in touch with people and you need to be able to get in touch with people at, at the event itself somebody should be monitoring the phone in the booth so that you can see when the next people get here if there's any problems um etc does anybody have any questions i didn't go over in the beginning but if you have questions please use the chat as i'm talking and i will answer them as they come up um expenses oh i'm doing good on time that's good um it may require a budget um ours doesn't uh and i mean like an event budget there's a form that we go through i don't know if every kingdom does this we have a form specifically that we can uh, that we have to submit to a um you know baronial finance committee and then they agree to it we get by with a vote on electricity which we have to pay for i'm going to go over that uh in a in a minute um so it's not that big a deal and and the um the seneschal has a slush fund of a hundred dollars uh that they can use to um buy emergency things um, usually those are band-aids and zip ties Have you considered setting up an event-specific Google Voice number used by the burst personnel to make a single point of contact for whoever is on duty? No. Um, I haven't. Uh, I don't know enough about that, so it didn't occur to me. Everybody has a cell phone and everybody has text. Uh, since we are using Facebook as a... Um, a repository of the planning and where everything goes there. And we curate that to keep it um, topic centric. So it's, it doesn't have a lot of, um, you know, it's got a topic and then it has discussion under that topic, but there's not a lot of spare topics that go on. So you lose the, the thread every day. I also pin that day to the top. Um, so that's a little, everybody can check that since they are using Facebook anyway, they have Facebook chat, uh, messenger, I guess. Uh, and we use that and it worked, has worked so far. Great. Over the course of, well, I guess we did that. We had a problem with communication in the first year, um, because we only had four badges and we had to constantly swap people in and out. Um, so we, uh, the second year we had Four, but we I, there were some mitigating issues because um, we had extra badges for the demo, um, and then we really haven't had that issue um, where we're where we have a short amount of badges where we need to immediately coordinate with people. So the chat has been used, I guess, for the last seven years, um, pretty good, pretty good. Um, if we come up with a problem, though, that's that's not a bad way to go. And if you're, I will say that if your group is happier with Discord. Um, they could use that. I loathe Discord as a as a way to get in touch with people, so we don't use it. That's it. And since I run it, I just say, don't you guys all, are, all have Facebook accounts? And they said, yes, we do. So we use that. Um, expenses. Uh, you're going to, no matter what you do, you're going to try and keep your expenses low. Um, again, it's a cost benefit analysis. If you don't get anybody, anybody from this event, uh, is it worthwhile to rent a $500 booth and a, uh, you know, an additional $500 in badges for people or so, um, that's a thousand dollar outlay for no recruiting return. But on the other hand, if you are at an event at a at your booth and you have spent a thousand dollars getting i think it was 10 people 10 people to go to three events breaks you even right so that's maybe okay 
um, that is something that you would have to take up with your financial committees or make sure, you know, see if it makes sense to you. Ours is a free booth. So we and we have gotten many people um, from this event. So it definitely makes sense to us. It's basically just time and effort. Um, time and effort is what the SEA people give for free all the time, all the time. So it's not a big burden to them. But keep in mind, again, that this is an event, right? So the same people that are running this event as, you know, just staff are probably going to run other events in your area. And if your area has very few people that run events or can run events, it's going to be the same people. So if you host two events and a demo, that's three events a year where you're on, which is work. And you don't want to burn people out. Um but keeping continuity with a, like, we're never not going to do Awesome Con as long as I am still in the SEA because it's too, it's too important for the health of the other groups in our area, not just ours as the DC group, but there are six groups around DC, five groups around DC and like eight in the greater DC area that are baronies, right? Where it's a, it's a pretty dense dense area so they are you know we feed them people we also ask them for volunteers right um back to expenses uh if you get baronial equipment specifically that's baronial equipment the barony will should spring for that so those wire walls that i was talking about we had the barony spring for those they were about 50 dollars for small ones for a set of four small ones or two something and about a hundred for large ones, I think we got three, maybe it was three and three. It doesn't matter. You can get them off Amazon. They weren't very expensive. And we, it's basically a, what a capital expense, right? You can use them year after year, as long as you don't lose the parts. Uh, and even if you do lose the parts, you still have the wire wall. You can zip tie that to stuff. So it's all good. Electricity, you're probably going to have to buy. Uh, no convention that I've ever been to allows you to have free electricity. Um, someone mentioned uh, in the last class that, that you can use a large battery uh, and be able to power your stuff there. And that's great if you can get away with that. Electricity is usually in the $100 range for a small group, unless you want something a lot, a lot. There's a lot of power flowing through 110 or 115 power. And you can and should use a splitter or, um, you know, um, power strip. Um, at the very least, we haven't decided whether we're going to use the video, the SCA dream video this year. Um, we have a lot of stuff coming in uh, and we're not sure that that makes sense. Uh, but if we, even if we don't use that video and the power that's needed by the power that's needed to uh, run the computer and the TV that, that runs that video to draw people in, we still want to be able to charge phones, et cetera, because you need that to communicate with the outside world. Uh, and it's not very much. They will want you maybe to buy Wi-Fi access. And I will caution you that our convention floor happens in the basement of the Washington Convention Center. The convention center. And the Wi-Fi down there is spotless. It doesn't matter. The only reason that you should purchase Wi-Fi service, in my opinion, and in my group's opinion, because I advise them thus, is that is if you are doing some kind of LAN party or you have online gaming that you have to stream from somewhere else, a cloud that requires a lot of bandwidth, your texting does not require any bandwidth. Um, for getting a phone call does not require bandwidth, although you may or may not be able to hear. Uh, get a slush fund approved. Um, we have been saved by not having enough zip ties, by having a small slush fund from the barony, usually it won't take more than $50. I have them do a hundred. Um, and then I seed back any money. I mean, obviously there are receipts. You just submit the receipts to your exchequer. Your exchequer approves them. You get cut a check. You probably will also need liability insurance. Now, the SCA itself has liability insurance, and you can tap that liability insurance for demos uh, and conventions. It's perfectly fine, but you have to know about it before you do it because they can't do it on a weekend turnaround. Like if it's the last thing that you need, and it's two weeks before the event, they're not going to get it done in time. You're going to have to 
buy whatever liability insurance the convention offers, which is usually just indemnity insurance in case your crap makes somebody else's stuff or damages the convention floor itself um, or any of their stuff. Um, your insurance will have to will have to cover that. We got the one year we did the SCA insurance last year. I forgot, and it was too late. And we got the convention insurance. They were a little bit more expensive. They were like fifty bucks more expensive than the SCA insurance. It's fifty dollars. Whether that's important or not means that you were good in getting your stuff in on time, uh, which I am not always. Uh, questions? Questions about expenses? I see no one typing, so I am moving on. Equipment. Nope, still nobody. Uh, so we needed a TV, a computer, and adapters. We didn't care if the TV had sound for the dream video. We wanted to catch someone's eye and draw them in. Uh, they can watch it without sound and figure out what's going on. Not a lot of people talking in that video. Lots of things being done in that video. Um, you're going to need a power strip. That's it. You're going to need a power strip. Uh, make sure it has a long cable. You can always shorten a cable with zip ties. You cannot lengthen a cable if you don't have enough to get from wherever they have drawn your power to the side that you actually want to put the TV on. Gaffer's tape. Does everyone here know what gaffer's tape is? Just went out in the middle of this past year. It's okay, that's fine. I think the SCA, I think the SCA insurance was $60, I want to say. And the convention insurance was maybe $120 in all. Um, gaffer's tape, gaffer's tape. Gaffer's tape is to, no, nah, there's really, it's, it's, it's a cloth tape. It sticks as well as duct tape does, but... It doesn't have a crappy residue. You can put it on the floor. You can put it on cloth. You can put it on everything to hold everything down if you want to. It's really good. Get a couple rolls of, of gaffer's tape. It will be fantastic. Uh, I put a note here that says you simply cannot have enough zip ties. And by that, I mean you simply cannot have enough zip ties. Small zip ties, big zip ties. Great big zip ties. You cannot have enough zip ties. If you don't use them this year, you will use them next year. If you use them all this year, then you'll be happy that you brought so many of them. We zip tie things to the wire racks that we put on so that they can't be taken by other people uh, when we're not there, although we are always there. The convention floor opens for exhibitions half an hour before people can actually get down there and uh, closes when people like a half an hour after people are supposed to be headed out the door some people some stragglers are around but they don't care about the ex exhibition booths because you're not selling anything right you're just displaying things they care about the artists who can get some of their stuff snagged from people who you know don't cover it fast enough we covered all of our things the first year and then never again because it was pointless um nobody ever messes with any of our stuff um, that's not because of zip ties, but I will tell you that the little hook things that go on the back of, um, of your, your scroll of patent, that's the loveliest scroll that you own, that you put on your wall, that you try and put on a wire wall. You're going to look at that and go, as soon as a strong breeze comes over, that's going to fall and break. That's not going to happen if you zip tie it up there. Zip ties. Um... Oh, the venue itself will supply things. They usually supply a table for 10 foot space and two chairs, uh, which are those plastic chairs. We get rid of those every year. Um, we have a 20 by 20 foot space. So we get three tables. Um, oh, no, wait, we get two tables unless we have an end cap and then we get three because we can we can branch them out. In any case, you'll get between two and three tables and then some amount of chairs we never ever use the plastic chairs inside the booth. We always use wood stools or Savio Rolo chairs or um, X chairs or Baronial Thrones or anything that has, basically anything has more, a stool has more gravitas for the SCA than a plastic chair does. 
please supply your own chairs. Uh, and those wire racks, I will tell you, are, yeah, there you go. 70, so 75, 50 to $75 is, is great. Convention rules is the, oh, does anybody have any problem with equipment? Any questions about equipment? No, but I miss any on the side besides gaffer's tape is awesome, which is, if you don't know what it is, write down in your notes, gaffer's tape is a prize. Um, have band-aids too. Um, and you're going to need tools. My wife wrote down tools. I didn't say it, but you're going to need tools. You're going to need at least wire um, clips for getting the zip ties off. <laughs> um, but also any screwdrivers. Bring power tools. Um, the SCA is anachronistic, right? It's right, right there in the name. Um, so if you, for instance, we had a... Um, um, a lantern that was um, glass. It was, um, I made, I made a, um, oh, what do you call it? The pieces of glass that you put, I can't think of it right now, that, you know, you put all together like a mosaic. Anyway, I made one uh, for a candle. Uh, you don't want to open flames at a convention. Uh, so you can run a light bulb up there, still a lantern. It still looks fantastic. Um, it's a little bit anachronistic. As long as it's not fantasy anachronistic, it should be okay. Uh, okay, convention rules. Um, specifically, their weapon policy. So the SCA uh, people love to wear belt knives. Um, belt knives are not legal. Um, we do a convention in DC. So weapons themselves are really frowned upon in DC in general. Uh, you definitely can't wear them on your hip. We can't wear rapiers. I'm a rapier person. Can't wear rapiers at the uh, at the event unless it's obviously fake. And none of our stuff is obviously fake. So we tape them to the wall. Now, we can carry them with us when we go to demonstrations. And we can fence with them at demonstrations because they're sports equipment. But they're also swords. So we got them to allow us to have them as long as we are displaying them and not wearing them. Bows and crossbows are equally okay. My suggestion, strong suggestion, is to um, not bring any arrows. You can have bows uh, and you can have quivers sabers are the same as swords. So, yeah. Now, um, we had our bow, I think, unstrung one year, but it was a long bow, so it looked like a stick. Uh, so we strung it the next year and put it sideways. It looks very much like a bow then, and it looks like a long bow. But we didn't have, I think I, I, think I did bring arrows, but we put them up high and we zip-tied them to the wall so nobody could take any out. Generally, if your university campus demos to keep them unstrung and have no arrows, then it's a fancy stick, right? You don't want a fancy stick though. Uh, crossbows are great for this because unstrung, they look like a crossbow, right? And they're usually fancier in a lot of ways than a bow is, unless you have like a um, like a, a, a short horseman's um, bow, a Mongolian bow. Those always look good, even if they're unstrung. They look better strung. They, they look just as good on strong. Um, so rapier and cut and thrust things, metal weapons, um, knives are, knives are definitely out, 100%. Uh, in every convention I've ever been to, knives are 100% out. You can't wear them on your clothes. They have to be super fake. Usually people that wear knives are just wearing a handle uh, in, a, in an empty scabbard. Uh, that looks knife-like, but is definitely not a knife. If you want to do that, as long as it's not, you know, they will usually make you tie something to it to show that it's fake. Um, that's okay, because the tie is usually uh, not that intrusive. Uh, so what I will say is most of those are easy to get around. Oh, I'm going to make my tie. Look at that. Uh, but armored weapons are buffer weapons according to them. So it doesn't matter how dangerous 
your armored weapons are by you on the field, Duke Richard. It only matters how they look at them. And they look at them like they're buffer weapons. So if you have really impressive ones, you should definitely bring those. Um, because people will talk about your weapons. They will talk about your giant bearded axe. Way before, uh, If it doesn't look like a weapon, though, like a sword looks like a sword. It doesn't matter if it's got a stick. And you can just say whatever you say about armored fighting with that. Um, because that's just the, the standard. If it looks like a bearded axe, it looks like an axe. Like any of that foam stuff looks like that a some of the pole arms the split head pole arms that are just a stick with some sides that you know are the are the cutting edge those don't look like anything um they're good for the rules of the sca but they're not good for showcasing uh i have had a spear out uh, with a smaller diameter head for armor fighting. And we use that to hold up the banners. I could throw up a picture again, but I'm not going to. Um, we use that so that we could just point to it and go, and you can use spears. These are what our spears look like. Very similar, except the head compresses a little. And then they are as impressed as you would hope that they would be. Um, there's a height policy for most displays. Ours is 14 feet. You can't go above that. If you have a banner that goes to 14 feet, they probably won't measure it if there's nothing around, but the floor is concrete and it's hard to keep a 14 foot pole upright without it crashing. My suggestion is to not go as high as you can without some decent infrastructure. Um, so, and keep in mind that any infrastructure that you might have like a, a big wooden um, thing to keep a giant pole up in the air um, requires floor space, floor space that you then wouldn't have for other things. But building up is usually a good idea because that allows people to see you from the other side of the Star Wars display that is getting all the attention otherwise. Oh, what's that flag over there? Bring banners. Uh, and outside booth activities. So, um, we had a problem one year that we had a smaller booth and we brought musicians in uh, to the booth to play medieval music, uh, dance music mostly. In the Inside the booth, uh, they took up floor space uh, and they didn't want to do that. They wanted to be out in front of the booth, but that takes up floor space too. You're not really supposed to spill out into the walkway. When they got people together to do impromptu four-person dances while they were doing it in front of the booth, we got a talking to from the convention. I wasn't there at the time and I wouldn't have allowed it because I know the rules. But keep in mind that just because you know the rules doesn't mean that the people there know the rules and know which ones to take seriously. Outside of the booth activities is something that they should be taking seriously because that can get you disinvited. And if you're being disinvited from something that A, you paid for, it's terrible. And two, something that is free that you're getting people from, that is horrible for your group. Yes, telescoping fiberglass poles are pretty good. We used... Um, we didn't use fiberglass ones. We used um, aluminum um, pool, um, the things that go down on the pool, pool cleaning poles. Um, they were pretty cheap uh, and they telescope out to, I think 20 feet, um, something, something like that, 16 feet maybe. Uh, we had a couple of those, but we had a problem with putting them up uh, and making sure that they wouldn't fall over. Uh, also, something that you need to keep in mind is uh, if you have a banner, even if it's a silk banner, there's no wind uh, in a convention floor, right? So it's always going to just hang down. Unless you have one that, you know, you can hang like a, like a German banner or um, a Roman one, you know, that'll, that'll hang down. Uh, you can, yes, uh, a gone fan on I knew that. I'm super knowledgeable about banners. In any case, thank you. Um, unless you have one of those, um, you're not really going to be able to tell what it is as much as you can see what it is, right? You know it's a banner, 
You know it's probably medieval because you can tell that it's medieval, even if it's uh, hanging low. Uh, let's see. Outside of booth activities, I went over. Oh, SEA rules that matter. Uh, specifically for demos, if you have fighting uh, as a demonstration, you need a marshal, almost certainly. In Atlantia, you definitely do. Um, that can be your MC, and you should absolutely have an MC who is there calling what's going on, letting the crowd know. We had a crowd of about 150 people watching our demonstration up on a small stage. Uh, so we really needed somebody to be able to, like a herald, call out who was fighting, what they were in generally doing, who won, if they were going to be doing that. If it's all a play, like you're going through prescribed things, then you don't need a marshal. It's an ANS activity. But otherwise, you need to have a marshal. Um, most of the fighter, most of the people that work at our demo wear multiple hats. So it's not that difficult to find one, but yeah, that 100% what she just said, you know, it is, it, it's important to have people who can do voice heraldry. If they're a Chatelaine, I would say, I didn't, oh, I, I have that in the next thing. Uh, the bullying policy that the SEA has is in effect at the, at the, um, at all SEA activities. It doesn't matter where it is, high or low event or living room uh, sewing circle. And at a demo is certainly the case. Um, this applies to everything that happens inside your booth. Um, you, if a person from the attendance pool is bullying somebody in your booth, you can and absolutely should bring it up to the convention. The convention will deal with those people. If you have interpersonal relationships between two Skadian people, they should know that both of those people are uh, covered under the bullying policy and they should not be bullying. You can give them a warning. You can let them know. Um, but since you are in charge of that booth, you need to make sure that it, it shouldn't be a problem but it can be. And the last thing is the expertise that's needed. Uh, and uh, this is important. Um, you, we have a, okay, you need a, a project manager or an autocrat type person. Um, and they need to be somebody who is respected by the people who are working in that booth and they need to actually be in charge. Um, if they are in charge but not respected it won't work um, people will run all over them because it's volunteer you're at a convention you're outside of the sca norms and they just won't listen that happened to us last year i wasn't on site because i was ill and uh it didn't go as well as i had hoped that people would do it you need somebody who is dealing with email that comes specifically from the convention, if that's how you sign people up. I think I got, I think I got five minutes. We use a QR code. We have somebody who is good, who can generate a QR code. They can scan it on their phone. Attendees can scan it on their phone and it will send them to a website. That they can type in a few things, their zip code, their email address, Okay, good, thank you. Um, thank you, thank you for that. Um, they're not going into another class. I'm gonna go a little bit over so that we can take questions about QR codes because that is important because that's the whole reason we're doing this, right? Is to garner interest in the SEA and how we track that. Now, I will say the QR codes are great because the site that it dumps them into, your, um, um, your electronics person who set that up can go to that site and see how many hits that got. That will garner you how impressive your site is, how many people you interacted with, how many people took the time to even go the small step of scanning your QR code and going and visiting actually that site, right? That can give you data. Data is everything when you're talking about demonstrations and if you want to sync your personal resources, uh, time, money, effort, 
uh, into uh, your barony's time, money, and effort into this demonstration, uh, into this booth. Um, so it's important to, we found that a QR code was the way to go. Yeah, some groups had business cards with QR codes. That's cool if your QR code never goes away. Yeah, lots of people scan the code. Uh, and again, it can just be an email address or some other way to contact them and their zip code. Um, because we're DC and it is a giant area, we do reach out to, I do reach out to other Chatelaines in the various groups because it's the easiest way to fill our booth. If I fill my booth with nobody but Chatelaines, then I know that every single person there has at least had the minimal training that Chatelaines get to be able to talk to new people and not screw that up, right? You can get an old grognard like me who isn't a Chatelaine, who isn't technically a Chatelaine, but, um, and they, they know things as long as they are willing to talk to other people and they seem approachable. That's all you really need, approachable people, right? Um, where was I going with that? Oh, people around you. But um, the, the first year we started tracking the data, we got about 50 people for us. We got about 20, we'll say 30. We'll say 30 people from the one, one of the... Um, the Shires next door to us, um, a smattering of them in the 10 to 20 range from almost every group around us. Uh, and then I think there were three people from South Carolina, one person from Texas, one person from Drakenwald in Sweden, I want to say, um, who I th think used to be in the SCA in the States, and then they got deployed overseas. So all of those are able to be gotten to because we know what zip code they're in or APO box. Uh, and we can track all of those. Uh, and it, it bumps out the numbers in the entire area, which is, which is basically everything. Um, and you need to be able to point them to a website. Uh, if your website is crap, get with a web minister and make it not be so. Um, you have to you have to update it, especially if you want. Um, it doesn't matter so much if you get people my age. I mean, I'm 50. That's fine. Um, I can look at a crappy website. Um, yes, exactly. I would definitely point that QR code. Last year, I was talking to pointing a QR code to almost a link tree, which, in my opinion, is the worst thing ever because then it's just. A page of links and who knows where they go and it's just more information and uh, that's not what i wanted i wanted something that was more targeted um but being able to track that stuff is super important um so uh questions please did i miss anything that you guys were really interested in hearing that i skipped over yeah, I've run into local groups being kind of territorial about recruiting. Do you have any advice for inviting other Chatelaines? Yeah, you just invite them. Uh, honestly, I, um, they, uh, one thing I will say is the host group is not to be trod upon. Um, so we are the DC Barony. So our event is in DC. So we are the host group. Everybody else is uh a guest of that host group and helping out that host group if they look like they're taking over or they want to take over you don't allow that um that actually happened to us about five years ago the local shire that we were in was in a recruiting upswing and they wanted to have a day where it was they were just staffing it with their people uh and we kind of allowed that but they staffed it for them specifically come to this area we are the best that's fine per se, but that is not the point of the SCA. It's usually more of a generic. Everybody goes their things. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, so what I will say about demographics of the people staffing the booth, 
uh, and I covered this last hour. Um, you should invite your chatelaines first. Um, your local, um, whether that's baronial um, or shire, um, most groups have a chatelaine. I don't know that shires are required to have a chatelaine or if, sh uh, what are they, cantons are required to have a chatelaine, but baronies are required to have one. So start there. Your regional chatelaine and your kingdom chatelaine. If they can make it to a 50,000 person event to be able to talk up their thing, that is also their thing that they're trained to do, you should lean on their experience and expertise. Absolutely, 100%. So that can garner you three people right there, right? Or somewhere in that neighborhood. Outside areas, those chatelaines all talk. They're in the same region. They're dealing with the same people. Really? You don't require chatelaines. That's super interesting. I thought that was in Corpora, that, but it might just be Atlantean Corpora, right? That every group has to have a specific thing. Um, like everyone has to have, at the very least, a uh, chronicler, uh, exchequer, uh, seneschal, and, and a marshal if they're going to do any marshalette activities. And then other ones can be filled in. But I think a barony has to have more than that in Atlantia, at least. So it's that's inner kingdom anthropology is interesting. Um, Shadowing isn't required position either. Wow. Well. Okay, that I that I was that I was pretty sure of. Um, cantons can have in Atlantia anyway. They can have like a like a pick three. Like you have to have this and this, and then any of these other required offices. Uh, okay. In any case, those are three people. Your Baron Edge, the people who are the face of your group. You should probably invite them, even if they can't come. You should probably invite them, and then other people who want to do it. I think the ones that have the most uh, impact are the the guys that are somewhere between, uh, not guys, but just folks that are between uh, 20 and 40. Um, I wouldn't rule out anyone um, personally. Um, I think that you have to um determine for yourself what kind of representation you want um to showcase um and this is a showcase right so if you have if you have various demographics not just age but race gender i mean if you have um if you have a lady knight in your area and she wants to come you should let her because representation, I mean, that's what they always say in every movie ever that comes out, representation matters. If you can see yourself in that garb, because there's someone there already in it, like, that's what you do, right? You you try and make sure that those are, that those are good. Um, yeah, any other questions? <laughs> 